Hello again everyone, Marcus here, I review stuff. Today I'm reviewing the song Paranoid by Black Sabbath. As always, this song comes to you as a request from one of my viewers. Uh, so if you want to be that person to request something, just leave it in the comments and I'll be sure to get to it. Um, so look guys, I'm going to be straight with you. I've heard this song a million times. It's a fantastic song. Uh, I feel like if you, if you listen to rock and metal, you've come across this song at some point, right? This is a fantastic song. Uh, one of, probably one of the greatest rock songs of all time if we're being honest with ourselves so um, I'm not going to lie to you guys I, I take my authenticity very seriously I'm not going to be like oh this is my first time listening to Black Sabbath because it's not and, and I can tell you I have not listened to everything from Black Sabbath so if you're a Black Sabbath fan out there and you want to see me react to something that I haven't heard of I would just say uh, stay away from the singles uh, you know I've heard Paranoid I've heard Iron Man I've heard um, uh, I'm, I'm blanking I've heard a little bit of um of Ronnie James Dio Black Sabbath, like uh, Heaven and Hell is probably one of my favorite songs from them. Uh, oh, Symptom of the Universe. I was, I was like, I was, there's another song I was missing. War Pigs. I've heard War Pigs. Um, NIB. Um, I mean, I've heard, I've heard like the, their big songs. There's, there's, there's singles. Uh, I was a huge Ozzy fan when I was like in elementary school, guys. Like elementary and middle school. That was, I was all Ozzy all the time. Um, you can ask my parents if you know them, I guess. I don't know why I said that. Uh, basically, yeah, I remember I have like a very distinct memory of like walking into my, my fourth grade class just like singing uh, uh, Crazy Train by Ozzy, you know, just kind of do do do, you know. Um, so I'm a huge Ozzy fan, at least I was when I was a kid. I, you know, I still like his music nowadays. Um, but really, guys, I've, I've really only heard, like, the singles. So if you're like, man, I want to see this guy's, like, authentic reaction to some Black Sabbath, give me, like, the non-singles, or maybe the songs that kind of fly under the radar. Uh, I'll definitely have to listen to those, all right? So again, being totally honest, if you want to click off the video, I totally understand, you know, a lot of times you want to see someone react to something for the first time. But these videos are always fun for me because I actually just get to listen to something that I already know I like and just really talk about uh, why. I like this song so much. So anyway, if you want to stick around and, and, and at least listen to the song, feel free. But if not, I get it. See you guys in the next one. All right, here we go. Again, this is Paranoid by Black Sabbath. One thing I always try to do is if I already know the song, if you know, if I'm already very familiar with it, I try to pick like a live performance that I haven't seen before to at least kind of get that extra layer of something, you know. So I don't think I've ever seen this one before. It's Paranoid from Top of the Pops, 1970. So let's give it a look and, and you know, let's see how they do live. Here we go. That's a stylistic choice. I kind of like it.
that was great, actually. Like, that live performance was fantastic. I mean, it sounded, hell, just as good, if not better live uh, than it does on the, um, on, like, the studio recording. Man, I have a newfound respect for that bassist, man. I mean, like, I, whenever you listen to it, like, in the studio recording, that bass does really come through, and it sounds fantastic. But just seeing him carry that tune the entire time, I think, was actually super impressive for me. Uh, you know, I think to- Tony Iommi gets a lot of credit for his guitar riffs. I mean, rightfully so. Dude's a great guitarist, but um, that bass, like that bass, was really, really good. Um, and and I forgot how much I actually just really liked the bass in that song. Um, but to really see it like played out on there on stage, I think really worked for me. From the get go, I felt like I was like, man, this sounds a little bit slower than what I'm used to. Uh, by the time, but by the time they really got into the song, I I really couldn't tell the difference. So. Um, I, I will say, like, the drummer in, in Black Sabbath, like, on War Pigs, man, I love the way he approaches those drums. And that's when I feel like the drums are just kind of there. I think it really works, though, just because that bass is really carrying that nice tune and with the guitar as well. Um, and then I just, I love Ozzy's voice, man. I don't know what it is. I've always loved the way he approaches uh, things vocally. So, anyway, let's go ahead and um, break this one down. You know, we've heard it a million times, but let's take a look at those lyrics and talk about it. So... Uh, let's see. The song of it by Black. This song by Black Sabbath is consistently ranked as one of the greatest heavy metal songs of all time. Maybe the biggest hit of Ozzy's group, along with Iron Man. The lyrics were written by and about bassist Geezer Butler. Hey, he did a great job. Who in the band often called paranoid, even though he didn't know what the word meant. They are about Butler's feelings as a depressed teenager and him thinking he was going insane. According to the band, the song only took 20 minutes to write. It was supposed to be just a filler song, and the album was supposed to be called War Pigs. When they released it as a single and it got very popular, however, the record label wanted them to name the album Paranoid. Cool, I actually didn't know that. Uh, What had the artist said about the song? Tony Iommi. I started fiddling about on the guitar and came up with this riff. When the others came back from lunch, they recorded it on the spot. Nice. Geezer Butler says, basically, it's just about depression because I didn't really know the difference between depression and paranoia. It's a drug thing. When you're smoking a joint and you get totally paranoid about people, you can't relate to people. There's that crossover between the paranoia you get when you're smoking dope and the depression afterwards. Wow. I've, I've never had that experience, so I couldn't tell you what that's like, but... um. And that's the thing I really like about doing these videos is, like, I, I never knew any of this about Paranoid. I was just like, that's a really cool song. I like it. <laughs> and so now to actually stop and slow down and kind of read um, what the artists have said and the inspiration behind it, it's like, okay, that's actually pretty interesting. I never knew that. So uh, anyway, let's take a look at it. What is it, what is it going to say here? Uh, in those days, you didn't have tape recorders. You had to play riffs, keep playing them, and remember them. We were recording the album, and the label suddenly said, you don't have enough songs. We didn't know what to do, and they asked us to come up with another song. Within a few minutes, I came up with uh, the riff to Paranoid, played it to the other guys, and they liked it, so off we went. That's how simple Paranoid was. We wrote and recorded it in a day. We really didn't want a hit single with Paranoid. Okay, cool. I'm not going to read the whole thing because I want to get through the lyrics here. But uh, So finished with my woman because she couldn't help me with my mind. People think I'm insane because I am frowning all the time. It's hard to read these lyrics and not sing them, just how much I've known them for all these years, right? Uh, all, all day long I think of things, but nothing seems to satisfy. I think I'll lose my mind if I don't find something to pacify. Yeah, you know, with the, with the title Paranoid, I would just assume this song was about someone who was like super paranoid. And, and I guess it does make sense. But as the bassist said, really, your paranoia and your, your paranoia and your depression are almost like two sides of the same coin I guess is what it sounds like you know and and as someone who has dealt with a lot uh, who is sometimes like man I'm like fucking depressed right now um, there is a sense of paranoia where it's like people hate me people don't like me uh, or like I'm never gonna like uh, find love or like those little intrusive thoughts that I feel like could dip into paranoia in some ways you know um, I, so I, I kind of get it now. Like it's it's interesting seeing uh, again the basis talk about it. I, I never knew uh, this about paranoid. So anyway, uh, I think I'll lose my mind if I don't some, find something to pacify. Can you help me occupy my brain? Whoa, well, yeah. I need someone to show me the things in life that I can't find. I can't see the things that make true happiness. I must be blind. So very clearly about depression there. Uh, make a joke and I will sigh and you will laugh and I will cry. Again, being depressed, not being able to find uh, the humor or the fun in, in, in some of those everyday things. 
happiness I cannot feel and love to me is so unreal. I mean, clear as day about depression there, right? And so as you hear these words telling you now of my state, I will tell you to enjoy life. I wish I could, but it's too late. So I, I've always loved that last line because it's like, for me, it's too late. I'm depressed as shit. Like, I'm stuck in a rut. But for you, you go enjoy your life. And I feel like a lot of times people who are depressed uh, will do that. You know, they, they put on this brave face. They smile. They laugh. They try to make other people feel good because they can't capture that feeling themselves. So, yeah, uh, you know, I feel like, uh, again, having read uh, these comments by Iomi and by Butler, I'm like, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And it's something that I always just took this song for granted as just this fun song. And, yeah, you think about the lyrics a little bit, and it's like, okay, about someone who's paranoid or whatever. But really, when you sit down and think about it, it's like, yeah, there, there's a lot, I think, that you can you can pull apart from these lyrics. And so it's no it's no secret that this is a fantastic song, and, and the lyrics are easily singable and, and it's just it's a fun song two thumbs up lyrically uh but really a lot to take away from it i feel like um as far as the instrumentation goes again this is just one of those classic songs i think the bass really carries that tune nicely uh and, and again to see the guy do it uh and just have his finger strumming the entire time i think was really cool uh tony iomi you know he's a, a genius on guitar his riffs are just so catchy you just want to listen to them all day so i think they did a fantastic job on this one of course i mean come on i've listened to this song a million times now I, I'm, I'm treating this i was talking about it as if this is like a reaction like i normally do but i mean really guys this is a classic song we know it's great uh, both instrumentally vocally lyrically it's two thumbs up for sure replay value it's been on the playlist for years guys for decades two thumbs up yeah i mean there's no surprise here but like i said it's really just it was fun to kind of see that live performance that i don't think i've ever really seen um, and to get some of that background information that I don't, again, I don't think I've ever really sat down and thought about that stuff. So, uh, really cool to see, and I hope you guys at least got something out of it. And if you didn't, well, uh, better luck in the next one. Like I said, recommend some Black Sabbath that I haven't heard yet. You know, pick some of the stuff that has kind of flown under the radar in their discography, and I'd be happy to check it out. So, uh, give me some more, like, uh, Ronnie James Dio Black Sabbath. Like I said, I've heard Neon Knights and, and uh, what was it, Heaven and Hell, um, and maybe one or two more. Uh, but yeah, I love Ronnie James Dio. Give me more of him in Black Sabbath. Again, give me those songs that Ozzy did that were sort of under the radar. So looking forward to those as always. If you enjoyed the music as much as I did, of course, go support the artists. Go listen to their music wherever you can. One place you can for sure find this song is going to be in my Spotify playlist. It's in the description below. It has every single song I've heard so far on my channel as long as it's on Spotify. Uh, and if you want to support me and just all the normal stuff you do on YouTube, you know, like and subscribe and comment. I feel like I really blew that through that last part. But yeah, hope you guys have a go and see you in the, ne uh, see you in the next one. There we go. Uh, bye. See you. Bye.